Hey, you found us, Saab Talk Live, this webcast for Saab owners and Saab lovers and anybody interested in keeping these cars on the road. So glad you found us. Thanks for joining us. Hey, how would you like to have the seats in your car look this good? You know, many of us have seats that, well, they're just kind of old and tired looking. The leather is worn and showing its age. Well, tonight you're going to meet a guy who made a big change in this particular SPG and put, the, uh, put those seats back to looking fantastic. And he did it all the work himself. And uh, that is who you're going to be meeting in just a moment. If we haven't met, good to see you. My name is Lee Kelso. I'm just a hobbyist mechanic kind of guy and a web stream producer and also owner of uh, uh, a Saab and uh, operator of a small YouTube channel. Um, this little channel covers the work that I'm doing on my Saab 900. The current car is um, a 1994 Saab 900 commemorative edition. Uh, the car is number 391 out of 500 built, and it's got a sick turbo outfit right now. So in the latest episode on the channel, we did a little testing out on the road to try and figure out what's going on and improve the base boost level. And still got some work to do, but we're making progress. And if you'd like to see that, just drop into the channel and you can check it out yourself. Because this show really isn't about me or my cars. It's about people in the Saab community. And a lot of those guys are tinkerers and do-it-yourselfers. And that's why I want you to meet tonight. Kelly Conati is joining us live from his garage down in Alabama. Kelly, how long have you been into Saab's? Um, hey Lee, how you doing tonight? Um, I've been in the Saabs just slightly over four years. Um, about five years ago, I commenced my search for my first one um, and got my first one and then quickly followed with another, then another, and now don't you know it, I've got six. Yeah, you've got a really impressive collection, and uh, here's just part of them. They are all beautiful cars, Kelly. Um, done a lot of work on these, I assume? I've done mostly, you know, nothing major. I've done mostly cosmetic type work, little maintenance, you know, items, mm -hmm. you know, wheel bearings, etc. Stuff like that. Nothing major. Okay. Hey, let's walk through your collection real quick, though. Tell us a little bit about this big one. All right, this big one, um, it just caught my eye. It was for sale. Um, I already had two vegans, and I mean, uh, two cars in the stable. One of them was a vegan convertible, and um, I just happened to see this for sale uh, on Saab Central. I uh, contacted the guy, and he was a you know, straight-up kind of guy, explained everything he did to it, and um, it started its life in uh, Indiana, I believe, and then went to Wisconsin, but was always garaged during the winters. Um, absolutely zero corrosion on it. Um, he did some performance and convenience upgrade upgrades on the thing and when i got it it was in pretty good shape i made it basically perfect though after i got it it's a beautiful car and then you've also got this 9000 one of two you own yeah yeah that's true this one um i picked up oh uh, not too long ago a couple of years ago and uh this one needed a little bit of work it had uh, timing chain rattle uh the guides needed replacement i had some help doing that kind of work i don't do a lot of the uh, heavy lifting, get into deep into the engine type work, um, basically because I don't want to and I'm busy otherwise. But um, the interior of this thing, I refurbished the driver's seat and the interior is perfect. And those seats are awesome. Oh, yeah, they are. 9,000 seats are sweet, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they are. Uh, this Cabrio is beautiful. This is a great looking car. Yeah, this was my first Saab. Um, I bought this sight unseen. A guy in Kansas City owned it. Um, guy was Swedish, so I figured I wasn't taking too big of a chance buying it sight unseen. Um, it needed some TLC when I got it. It ran good, but it, uh, you know, it just needed a lot of cosmetic work and TLC and, you know, to get it running right. And um, you know, it took me a little while, but uh, I, I have it just about where I want it right now. And yeah, it's a pretty car. Well, I'm, I'm probably um, older than that car, and I need a little TLC from time to time. So, you know, I get that. Yeah. Uh, let's move over to your gray collection. Here's yet another Vigan. What is it that makes a Vigan a Vigan? Well, what makes a Vigan a Vigan is it, it was a limited production, you know, from 99 to 03. Um, it had some um, performance upgrades, 
uh, the engine was a little bit more powerful. Uh, they were all standard uh, manual transmission cars. Uh, the interior was a little bit different than the standard 9.3. Uh, has special seats in it, that kind of thing, and it's a, it's a very powerful car. And then uh, here's your other nine thousand, beautiful as well. Right. Yeah, this one uh, it's got fifty six thousand miles on it. Um, I picked it up from uh, a guy in Texas. Actually, um, he couldn't drive it anymore, so his nephew sold it for him, um, and I had it shipped from Colorado. And uh, it, I don't drive it much. I took it to SOC last year, so. Uh, quite a few people got to see it there, but it is just about perfect. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. And then the SPG that you're going to be showing us the work you did in on the seats yeah. today. Yeah. Um, I had an SPG before this one, um, and uh, you know, I did some work on it. It wasn't quite up to what I wanted, I thought, uh, so I sold it. Um, after I sold it, I missed driving the old 900. So I picked this one up last June. A guy in um, Atlanta had it. He was about ready to uh, um, commence on a uh, uh, restoration of the thing. And so I got it and a car full of parts. And, you know, it just, it's just a nice car. It needs a little cosmetic work still, but the interior is perfect. Yeah, it sure looks great. So let's get into that now. Yeah. This is the interior as it looks today, but uh, this yeah. is where you started. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It had some cracks and uh, um, no rips, no tears, but a lot of wear on the bolster. You know, everyone experiences wear on the bolster, but the upper uh, bolster and the lower bolster had some cracks and wear, and it, it just didn't look right to me. And uh, so I, I wanted to uh, make it as perfect as I could without replacing the seat covers. And so um, I've been experimenting for a few years working on leather, and I figured this was, you know, well within my capability to uh, get it all spiffed up. Okay, so step one is a good cleaning, and this is the product you used. Yeah, you don't have to use this. You can use Dawn um, dish detergent. But um, ah. over the years, people just put you know, conditioners and moisturizers and all of that stuff on the leather. And that really doesn't help the leather. It actually hastens its demise. So hmm. what you got to do is you got you to clean all the old stuff off. You got to clean the body oils off and you got to clean the conditioners off and get all of that stuff off of there. So I use the SEM soap, but you don't need to. You just need to use a good all-purpose cleaner or even Dawn uh, detergent. And I used a... Um, a, um, a scuff pad there just to, you know, rough it up just a little bit as I was cleaning it. Gotcha. And then, uh, this looks like rubbing alcohol. Is that what you use? Yeah, I just, after you clean it up like that, you wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. And then just to clear off any residue, I use al alcohol and a microfiber cloth just to get rid of all, you know, any remaining residue. Gotcha. Okay. Now this, this next step is uh, one that's going to surprise people and, um, but you can't be a sissy about it, right? You need to get no. out your sandpaper. Yeah, you can't be a sissy about it. You have to understand uh, how these uh, seats are constructed. And uh, just to put it simply, there's a, uh, a, a coat of paint, if you will. It's dye, but there's a coat of dye, and then there's a clear coat over the top of that. So um, if you're going to do any repairs to the leather, you have to, you have to rough it up and sand it and smooth it down. And any of the high ridges you see there you have to smooth down. And uh, it, it's just like working on the exterior of a car. You, you know, you got you got to sand it down. And so you use that 600 grit sandpaper. Obviously, you want to be pretty gentle with that, right? Yeah, yeah you don't, uh, you go in one direction, usually. Uh, you know, you follow um, the contour of, of the panel you're sanding. And you don't, you don't get into the weather too much, just kind of rough up the surface. Okay, gotcha. Next product is uh, this leather filler. What's its role and uh, how do you use it? Well, this stuff is a very flexible crack filler. And um, you just spread it on with a palette knife and uh, allow it to dry. This, it dries very quickly. You can hasten the drying, actually, with a heat gun. But you just fill in the cracks. Um, and it depends on how fussy you are. Um, you know, you can just 
fill in the cracks one coat and go with that or just keep applying more and more coats until it's perfectly smooth. The only problem with more and more coats is you kind of lose the grain of the leather. So I like to just fill in the cracks, the bad cracks, and then, um, you know, be satisfied with that. You know, I'd be concerned that over time that stuff is going to peel off or flake off. Have you had any experience with that? Yeah, it, it really does a pretty good job. Um, that's why you have to really clean it. Really clean it good, sand it so the, the dye can adhere to it. And uh, the alcohol, uh, you know, cleans off any residual cleaner or oils or anything like that. So you really, it, the key is the prep, just like anything else. So then next step is, what's this stuff that you're applying here? Now this is a dye. Um, this is um, a dye to match the seats in the car. And I'm using a uh, foam, just a piece of foam, and I'm dabbing the uh, areas of the filler with this dye. And um, just getting coverage, one, two, three coats, whatever it takes just to cover the white there that you see that on, the, on the crack filler. Mm-hmm. And again, no, uh, you've had no experience with this coming off on clothing or anything like that? No, 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 no. no. It, it dries really rock hard. You know, it's, it's a flexible dye. Um, it won't crack. And as long as you prep it right, it's, it's going to last forever. Did you, uh, did you find this um, the color match to be good? How did you get the, the right color out of that dye? Well, there's a, uh, various sources you can find. Uh, I got this off a guy on eBay. He's... He's in Great Britain. Um, he uh, sells sad parts, and I guess he specializes in the dye, and he will color match the dye for you. And oh, great. You can, so give yeah, him year and, and everything. He knows all that, huh? Yeah, yeah. He, you just give him the, the color code, you know, the, the trim code, and he knows exactly what it is. Okay, great. And then came this stuff. What What is this stuff? This I like to just put as a top coat to blend the color. That This looks like a moisturizing cream, believe it or not, but it's got dye in it. So this helps blend, this helps kind of fill in the, the, um, the tiny cracks. It helps you blend the dye. You can use this in lieu of the other stuff that I was using. Um, and as a matter of fact, I use this for touch-ups here and there if there's a little bit of wear on the bolsters. But I like to just take this and rub it in. And it's like a moisturizer. Um, when you do the sanding, you're, you're kind of removing the top coat, the clear acrylic protective coat. So this stuff will, will soak in, and, and uh, I just rub it in vigorously with my hands. And then how, um, how do you know when you've got it? I mean, does it change? Is, is it dries in color? I mean, getting that color match is pretty critical, I assume. Yeah, I mean, that's why I do like a panel. Um, you know, I wouldn't do just a little section. I go from the seam, if you see on the photo there, in the top right, there's a seam there. I would go all the way down to the next seam. And uh, with the darker seats, it's easier to trick the eye. You know, the lighter seats, it's a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. to get the exact match. But if you if you contain it to one panel, it's, it's a little bit less noticeable if it's not a perfect match. But my dyes were a perfect match, and, uh, you know, I rub that stuff in, and then I wipe it off and wipe the excess off and then buff it after, uh, and so it's dry, it's completely dry then. So were your seats um, dry? I mean, you know, my convertible, the seats were just absolutely brittle and the seams were split and they weren't pliable anymore. Were your seats yeah. still pliable? My, my seats were pretty supple still. Um, and the, the basic area of wear was, you know, when you drag yourself in and out of the car and, uh, you know, there's, it just wears off the, the coating and the color. And so you got, you got a gray seat, but you got this light uh, gray or whitish type wear area on the bolsters. So it's perfect, especially that recoloring dye. You just rub that in and, and it covers it right up. What if the seats are actually, the leather's cracked and split a little bit? Will that filler handle that or are you kind of the stuck? Filler, the filler will handle that, but if you have really dry cardboard type seats there's there's nothing that's going to fix that you just have to replace the seat cover or just be happy with dry cardboard like seats that look decent yeah gotcha and then you topped it off with this stuff huh right um most uh car seats have 
a clear acrylic coating, and that's all this stuff is. And uh, you just wipe this on, one or two coats. Um, if, if it's too shiny, this is matte, but it still comes out a little bit shiny. If it's too shiny, you just kind of buff it flatter so it doesn't shine as much. But this gives you an extra layer of protection over that dye. And then here's a, there's a shot of the seat after you've done some of that work. Boy, it looks really great, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I was very happy with the way they came out. And uh, there's the whole seat, and right. uh, then there's the interior of your SPG. Right. Really, man, that looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with it. Did you, is that, that was a matte finish you put on it, uh, but yeah. now this has got some gloss to it. How did you get the gloss back, just buffing it? Yeah. I clean, I clean the seats, and um, I don't use moisturizers. I don't use conditioners. I just clean it with a damp rag uh, with the Lute all-purpose cleaner. Um, and, you know, when you put moisturizers on it, you're just locking in the dirt and the oils, so it doesn't really help. And that is, those are just the seats that are clean. Oh, wow. They look That's the way they look, yeah. Yeah, they really do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they really do. And, you know, I'm going to go back to that shop for just a second because, uh, hey, what's that thing in between the seats there? If you own a classic 900, you don't have one of those. So what is that? That armrest? Yeah, I've, I've got to have an armrest. You know, when I'm driving down the road, kicking back, I've got to have an armrest. So what I did is I adapted an old um, Volvo 850 console cover that has a, an integrated cup holder. And uh, I built a um, kind of a pedestal that I bolted to the, to the console, the plastic console, and put a little hinge on that thing so it can swing up out of the way. And uh, now I've got myself an armrest and a cup holder. Wow, that's a great idea. Nice work. Now, I understand that you're, uh, this sequence is being featured in this month's edition of Nines. Is that right? The Saab Club of America's magazine? I have an article on there, and I got my name wrong. Uh, which I'm suffering no end of uh, uh, kidding about. But um, there's a basic, you know, introductory article in Nines, basic uh, leather care and mm -hmm. uh, simple repairs. Um, and I plan to do further articles, doing more and more complex stuff. I think for the next issue, I, I may include the SPG seat renovation. I have a vegan seat that I renovated as well that, that I'll include in an article. And uh, at some point, I might do a steering wheel and uh, repairing holes in the, in the seat. What is it that uh, that drew you to these cars? Oh, uh, well, um, I guess you'd have to go way back to my college days. I had a roommate who had a Saab. This was a, in the late 70s. And I would give her no end of grief, you know, sob story this, sob story that, that's a weird looking car. You know, I just gave her lots of grief. Um, 40 years intervened and uh, a good friend of mine who I was in the Coast Guard with um, basically told me about his. And uh, I visited him one day. I, I live in Alabama, but he's in Rhode Island. Um, and uh, he showed me his 900 convertible, sat in it, and just looked it over. And, you know, I thought that was so neat. But right after I got home, I started my search. And this is where you wound up. What year is this one? That's a 90. Yeah. So I am uh, I'm just very impressed with the quality of the, uh, the restoration that you were able to achieve there. It looks fantastic. So good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hope to have you back in the future. Another repair that you might be able to walk us through. I know you have fixed that floppy turn signal issue that I'm still struggling with, so maybe we can tackle that one. Yeah, that's a good one. It's pretty easy. It's very satisfying once you get it done. It doesn't take uh, you know too much mechanical ability, and uh, a lot of people uh, probably could use that repair. Oh, great. Well, hey, thanks so much for your time tonight. Kelly Canati from uh, his garage there in Alabama. I uh, really appreciate you having having you here on Salt Talk Live. Well, thanks, Lee. Take care. You bet. Hey, and thank you for joining us. Uh, Salt Talk Live coming up every other Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, don't have a guest locked down for uh, next time around yet, but if you have any suggestions, love to hear about it, and I'll put links to the products that Kelly used in the description below.